Hi, this is Shadi. No Gi Jiu Jitsu has become very popular, especially in the last decade or so. A lot of people are gravitating towards it because of the lack of restrictions. Uh, also, it's far more dynamic than the Gi, claiming the Gi has a lot of friction and it's very static compared to what you see in No Gi and it's attractive to a lot of people. However, the question remains, how did this game come to be and where does it come from? It's not as simple as Elio Gracie or the Gracie family took off their jacket and now you have no gi. In order to understand a phenomenon in grappling, the answer will always be the same. It's not that simple. You see, the relationship between armored grappling or belt grappling or jacket grappling and then naked grappling is interchangeable throughout history. It's a lot of back and forth. So you see in the Meiji era, there was a discussion uh, about this and this is nothing new. However, uh, what it is interesting about uh, jiu-jitsu today or Brazilian jiu-jitsu is that the nogi comes from the Brazilian culture. It comes from that part of the world. It's not uh, something that you saw happening in judo as well or anywhere. However, the nogi that we know of today is very much from Brazil and from Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So now first let's talk about the armor and uh, taking it off and then you know doing naked grappling. You see uh, in the Meiji era, uh, Uchida discusses in his book, Judo, that sumo is the predecessor of Judo and he talks about the parallels between the battlefield and sumo. And if you look at just any sumo fight, you would see uh, the similarities. You have a sudden clash between two, you have very little finesse in the gripping, uh, it's very fast paced, the fight ends rather quickly and the gripping is not as developed like in judo or wrestling etc. Uh, it is very much uh, still mimicking the battlefield because fighters wore chin armor if you've seen a samurai and they wear gauntlets and armors and so gripping them is not as easy as you think and also striking them with a closed fist or a kick is very dangerous and very risky and it's not something that you want to do hence the open palms and also the moment you put your hand on the ground it's finished because of the weapons that they might possess so if your stance is compromised even for a second you can get killed so Later on, of course, the big belt was added because of the garments ripping very quickly and also the circle and getting out of it uh, is a very important aspect in today's sumo. However, uh, with the generations coming, as Uchida says, the finesse has been has been developing in sumo because of the competitive aspect in it it's no longer a battlefield it's no longer life or death so something else had to transpire and that was of course jujitsu and judo and all those gripping and strategies that were developing the calmness the flexibility the yielding aspect uh, they were becoming more pronounced and developing uh, in jiu-jitsu rather than sumo but it all starts from the battlefield it all starts from the armor later on it was taken off hence you see sumo in the temple and of course competitive sumo uh, and later on you have the jacket now that's not to say that they immediately put on a jacket and it became you know the judo of today no uh, it went through a very back and forth process. I've talked about this in my history of the Gi. I will link it in the comments. And it's basically, they were stripped down to their undergarments. They would remove the hakama, they would remove the kimono, and they would remain in their undergarments, which resembled the Gi of the 1910s. And uh, from there, they would grapple, but they were very thin. So first they did a double weave, and then they added the rice grain 
later on in the 20th century to become the gi of judo today but here you see that image in front of you that they would strip down because they rip off very quickly and continue to grapple jujitsu style and as you saw there was the rear naked choke uh, in that image and so you can see that no gi was already being practiced but it was due to convenience and it was due to uh, being far more stealthy when fighting your training partners uh, and also you know to not rip your clothes off that often um, so as you can see that gi and no gi is a very interchangeable relation throughout history first you had the armor then later naked wrestling completely then the belt was added for more uh, leverage and more gripping option in sumo later it separated you had jujitsu and then you had the no gi in jujitsu because again undergarments are not something durable when you're fighting heavily and strongly and with intensity and then they would take it off and then they developed the double weave and then jackets with rice grain and double weave pants or shorts and so you have this very complicated history of gi and no gi it's not as simple as you know i want to develop my uh, foot sweep but from the overhook or whatever no it's there's a lot of cultural aspects intervening their clothing their uh their way of life uh how they wore uh, in the military etc all these things played a role between uh having closed or fully closed grappling or belt grappling like sumo and of course uh, naked grappling which you saw the, the depiction to people in their underwear uh, doing uh, no gi on the ground and the rear naked choke however in brazil what happened why is the brazilian branch so to speak is the most important one well in order to find out let's go to simonbjj.com this has been discussed recently on the website i will link it in the description below there is a ton of fights being discussed there and of course uh, you would see um, what a lot of people would say is luta livre played a big role and they're not wrong however we need to understand the mechanics of the events if, if, if that's a correct term of how that happened so in simonbjj.com there's a, a few figures being discussed tattoo and doo-doo for the sake of this video i will discuss tattoo however in that website you will also find a lot of things like uh, these uh, t-shirts of these historical figures and a lot more articles about the early uh, figures in the history of brazilian jiu-jitsu but in order to understand how the nogi phenomenon came to be uh, we have to go back to the early 1930s for the Dudu story. So you see, in the early 1930s, Dudu was a very well-known wrestler in Luta Livre. He claimed to have uh, over 80 victories uh, under his belt when he came to Rio de Janeiro. And when he did lose, it was uh, because fixed fights and he had bills to pay. So whether it's true or not we do not know so when he first came he trained with the gracie family and he had a lot of fights at their academies a lot of training i've asked uh, pedro valente during our talk is it uh, was he his student was elio the student of dudu because there's a lot of articles claiming that dudu was elio's wrestling teacher and he says no they did train together but he was not his student and i do believe him and i will tell you why later on you see he trained with oswaldo gracie and at one point he broke his leg in three places and it was a very bad injury he was hospitalized and then with time the relationship with the gracies of course deteriorated and he had a valetudo fight later on against none other than Geo Omori or Gioji Omori and in round three he beat him with a headlock choke which I believe people call bulldog choke as well 
and that was a Vale Tudo style fight, so like MMA. Later on, George Gracie challenged him, and there was a lot of uh, back and forth with the discussion of the rules, with the debates, and uh, George Gracie did not like the rules. For example, the uh, forearm blows, because I believe it's like a nine to six. I don't know, but he did not like this aspect, and so Dudu was slandering them, calling them cowards, and uh, a lot of bad names, and so this did not sit well with Elio Gracie, and so in 1935, they decided on a Valley Tudo fight, and so what Elio Gracie did best was play the guard game and be very conservative, while waiting for the right moment and we all know he was very good at that just watch the Kato fight and Dudu was trying to do ground and pound from the guard in Elio's guard and Elio was very good at defense and we all know they are good at that from the guard if you look at their uh, lessons and from there he started to get exhausted and so the referee stood them up and then as the fight started Elio delivered a swift kick to the ribs and Dudu just had to stop fighting and Elio won three years later in 1938 uh, Dudu passed away so you see they had a very specific needs they were being challenged by all these wrestlers and they had to keep up with them and so the gi came off it's very simple now here's what's interesting it's not as simple as they learned catch and they learned uh, jiu-jitsu and now they have this hybrid expression that's not the case at all if you look at the foundation of no gi and how it is happening you still have all the judo elements you still have the uh, the guard you still have sweeping you still have um, the way to submit someone it's all still functioning under the judo logic you don't see the cranks the way you see them in uh, wrestling and you don't see the pin and you don't see those uh, calf slices and leg locks the way you see them in uh, wrestling and so the leg lock game also took decades to evolve it took so much longer and fought a huge stigma before it's now you know, being trained the way it is today so um, it was just a way to fight these guys who were good wrestlers that was it in my opinion that's where it all started and I do believe that Elio said towards the end of his life and I remember seeing it he says that if someone is coming from another discipline I'm not gonna waste my time training his discipline in order to overpower him that would just be playing into his hands I'm just gonna focus on my jiu-jitsu because that's what I know and I'm gonna impose it and that's what happened and that's the vast majority of the expression of no gi it's still in a lot of ways judo even the takedowns yes the double leg etc it's all in the judo curriculum so if you have anything to add please let me know down below check out the link in the description below this was shady and thank you for listening